Okay, so there were a couple of you who were absent, and so I put some slides together, uh, copy this, and hopefully you'll catch up. Um, you probably already have, uh, but just in case. Okay, so you can pause at any time <clears throat> and uh, copy. So um, I will go through most of the slides. Okay, so take a second to do this. Um, see how you how, how far you can get, and hopefully you can get the right answer. So there are 48 fiction books, 38 novels, 24 non-fiction books. You want to put them in boxes, okay? So I guess I, I don't know how to word. I think it's not worded too nicely. So you want to give these books away, right? And think of sets as boxes. You want to put these books in, and I'll put you know in here. In here, in here, in here. I don't, and I'm just gonna make some random circles. So, um, I want this to be all made up of fiction books. Okay, fiction, 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 fiction. Okay, so I want every box to be just of one type. Um, and if this has, let's say, seven books, this box should have seven books, this one should have seven, this one should have seven, this one should have seven. And likewise, if this is, these are the novels, let me fill this in with novels, this box over here or this bag has only novel books, this one I only have novel books, and it has to have seven books as well, and seven is just an example, right? So uh, I want to separate them into sets and make sure that each set has only one type of book but all sets should have the same number of books. So if you end up having five sets of fiction, uh, that's okay. But every set has seven books. There's seven books in here, seven. And nonfiction here has seven and seven. And then nonfiction, uh, and then novels, you, you know, let's say you make eight sets of novels, one, two, three, four. Uh, you should have also seven in each. I'm not saying these are the correct answers because obviously they're not, but so. Make sure you separate them into uh, sets that have the same type and the same number. So this is a GCF problem. So uh, I'll use the ladder method because that comes in very handy. And I'm going to write fiction on here. Fiction. Novels. And nonfiction. Okay, so remember the latter method. It's helpful when finding the GCF or LCM. Um, 4 goes into 48 12 times. Call 4 goes 32 8 times. 4 goes 24 6 times. I can go on. So I'm going to use uh, 2. 2 works. 2 goes into 12 6. 2 goes into 8 4. And 2 goes into 6 3 times. This is a GCF problem. So I'll stop because there's no other number that goes into all three numbers. So here's my GCF. My GCF is the product of those two numbers, or 4 times 2, which gives me 8. Now you got to figure out what does that mean, 8, right? So, is 8 the number of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so 8 sets we can make here? Because we put 8 sets in this one, I'm going to make... I'll put six, not, uh, six fiction, six fiction, six fiction, six fiction, six fiction, six, six, and six for the fiction. For the novel, I'm going to make four sets, right? One, two, three, four. And I'm sorry, I'm going to make eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But you'll notice that. I'm going to have to put four books. So this gives me a total of 32, which is what I had. This gives me a total of 48, which is what I had. Notice that there's a couple of things wrong. First of all, in here you have six fiction books in each, right? And here you have four non novels in each. So right away, the numbers are different. I can't use this. Uh, that's not my answer because it says every set has to have the same number of books. So we're interpreting this particular uh, answers incorrectly right now. So if this is if this eight does not represent the number of sets, it has to represent the only, the only other choice is it can represent how many goes in each 
set. So for the fiction, so with that, that would mean that these three numbers are the number of sets for each type. So in fiction books, I should make six sets. One, two, three, four, five, six. And each set, I'm going to put eight. Eight, 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 eight. eight. And eight times six is 48, right? The novels. Novels, I should make four sets. One, two, three, four. And each set, I'm going to put eight. That gives our total of 32, right? And the last, nonfiction, how many sets am I going to make? I'm able to make three sets. One, two, three. And how many books am I going to make in each? I'll put in each eight, giving me a total of 24. This satisfies our two conditions, which is that each, uh, all sets should have the same number of books, and they all do. And all sets have only one type of book. So these are all fiction, 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 fiction. These are all novels, novels, novels. And these are non-fiction, 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 right? And they each have the same amount of books. So um, how many set of novels are there? Well, novels, there's one set, two sets, three sets, four sets. Okay. All right, so this was a clicker's question, but I, hopefully you can do this. So the ratio of lines to zebras is 3 to 5. So I like to use something like this, par, par, total. And you know what? I'll even draw three columns here. Par, and all right, remember that order does matter. So this is lions, so this is my zebras, and T for total, right? Um, so far, I know that if there are three lions, there are going to be five zebras, and there are going to be a total of eight animals, right? <clears throat> and that's what I, that's the information I gather from this. If the area has a total of 40 animals, what happens there are 40 altogether? How many are lions, and how many are zebras, or just how many are lions? Well, my total just grew from 80, from 8 to 40. So I'm going to put this number over here. Find your relationship. How did the 8 go about to grow to 40, well, times 5, so I know everything else is also going to be a times 5 relationship, right? Everything grew by a factor of 5. So that means that I'm going to have 15 lines and 25 zebras. You can even add this, 15 plus 25 equals 40, so I know these two numbers are also correct. So the answer to the question is when there are 40 animals, we're going to have 15 lines. So, a lot of this is knowing how to build re equivalent ratios. Okay, so from here, I'm going to create one like this. How did I get that? I multiply this times two, times two. Um, let's make another one, times 100. And I multiply the bottom by 100. Let's go times 9, 36, times 9, 45. So I can create a relationship. And uh, all these three fractions, all these three, are, are, uh, all these three ratios we just created, they're all equivalent to each other. Okay, so if you had a quiz and you got 36 out of 45, or you had a test and you got 400 out of 500, you just got the same grade. Okay, they're all equivalent. So, <clears throat> a, lot of, a lot of the things that we know, we need to know how to do is uh, a, completing, a, completing tables and uh, finding relationship between ratios. Okay, so um, I'm just going to make this up. Let's pretend these are a ratio of uh, boys and girls. Mm -hmm. What happens when there's 24 girls? How many boys would there, would there be? How many, what happens when there's 56 girls? How many boys? And how many, what happens when there's 64 girls? So, again... The easy way, uh, not there's no easy way. There's two ways of doing this. You can look at this this way, side to side. Eight times four is uh, eight times three is twenty-four. So I'm going to do the same thing here, times three. I can do from here to here is eight times seven. So from here to here would also be eight times seven, which gives me twenty-eight. And how did the eight become a sixty-four times eight? So I'm going to apply the same. Uh, multiply that by the same factor, which is times 8, and I get 32. So that's one way of doing things. 
Okay. <clears throat> Another way of doing things is for you to look here. How does the eight become a four? Divided by two, right? To go eight from the denominator to the numerator. How did the eight become a four? Eight divided by two is four. So what you can do is make that same divided by two. Divide by two. Divide by two. And you get the same answer. So if you can do an up and down relationship, I guess if you want to call it right. So how does the eight become a four division by two? Every single number here to go from denominator to numerator is also going to be a divide by two. And likewise, if you had to go from 32 to this, and let's imagine 64 was not there, it'd be the opposite times two. <clears throat> so, well, this one, if you look up and down, six, six or seven, nothing multiplied by six will give me seven, or nothing divided by seven, right, will give me six, right, not the relationship, not the thing I can use there. So, in this case, you will look side to side, seven times two, so times two will give me 12, from here to here is times five, times five. From here to here is times 7, and then times 7, 42, okay? Um, seriously, this one, uh, you know, let's do this. From 1 to 10 is times 10, right? So let me just pick some random numbers. So to go up would be times 10. 9 to go up would be times 10. 20 to go up times 10 to 200. So there's my chart. Okay, so here you were free to do uh, whatever you wanted as long as they were equivalent. Um, here, this one I'm going to do it this way. How does 9 become a 1? It's divided by 9, right? So everything here is going to be divided by 9. Divided by 9. And this one is divided by 9, which gives me 3. Okay, so you could have done side to side, not a big deal. It gives you the same. So this one. So you want to get so nothing multiplied by ten, except yes, you can multiply by four point five. But just for a second, imagine that we only I want only I only wanted you to deal with whole numbers. Okay, a relationship where you can multiply by a whole number to get there. And well, in this case, there isn't one, right? Nothing multiplied by ten whole number. And you give you 45. So what I'd like you to do is change this. Come up, change 8 tenths into another ratio that could eventually work itself to 45. So here are two options. So 8 over 10, I'm going to simplify 8 over 10 to 4 fifths. I divide the top and bottom by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Now, is, can I use 5 to go to 45? I can, right? And I get my 36. So I simplify the fraction, and then I use the 5. Um, there was a relationship to 45, which was time nine, times 9, and I applied it to the top. One way, simplifying. Now, if you didn't see that, you could have uh, increased it, make this ratio bigger. Um, what I'm going to do is multiply this by 9. So 10 times 9 is 90. 8 times 9 is 72. Why did I multiply by 9? Because from 90, I can get 45 by dividing it by 2. And which means I'll divide the top by 2, which gives me 36. Okay? So you can simplify if you can. You can increase your ratio. Whatever new ratio you, you're creating, you have ways of getting it there. So remember, the millions of ways of getting to your answer, but just only one right answer, okay? Let's try this one, 6 to 20. Uh, 20 times nothing gives me 25. How about up and down? It's 20 divided by something gives me 6, not that I know of. So you're, again, stuck to finding a new ratio that then will lead you to 25. So one way of thinking about this is what does 20 and 25 have in common? What is there uh, a common number, a common multiple of 20 and 25, well, there's many, you can always use the smallest one. And the smallest and the least LCM between 20 and 25 is 100. 
smallest number that they share is a hundred. That is a multiple of twenty and twenty-five is a hundred. So how did I get there? Times five. Times five. Twenty times five is a hundred. Six times five is thirty. Now can I get from hundred twenty-five? Yes, I can. I divide that by four. And I divide that by four. And over here I'm gonna get, I don't know, seven point five. Okay. <laughs> Um, same thing, except that it's a table now, that's vertical. Out of the 3 become a 50, nope, nothing times 3 gives me 50. Side to side, I can go this way, anything times 3 gives me 8, also a no. That's not going to work. So, we're stuck to finding a new equivalent ratio. Um, what's 3 and 50 share in common? They shared 150. Right? I can go from 3 to 150, which is times... 50. So 80 times 50 is going to give me 400. So I <clears> have <throat> 3 to 8 ratio, 3 apples, 8 pairs. What happens when there's 150 apples? I'm going to have 400 pairs. Now I can use a 150 to help me find what happens when there's 50 apples. So how did the 150 become a 50? Divide by 3. I'm also going to divide this side by and I'm going to get uh, 133.333, something like that. Yeah. Or I'm just going to write it like this. Okay. Ratio bears to wolves is 5 to 9. And again, I, c I can look 5 to 9 like this. Nothing times 5 gives me 9. Uh, so find something that can lead me to 12. There's many ways. Uh, the easiest way usually is to find something in common between 5 and 12. Their LCM usually works. Not usually, always works. <laughs> the LCM of 5 and 12 is 60. So when there's 60 bears, how many wolves? Well, it's times 12. Here's times 12, which gives me 108. So when there's 60 bears, it's going to be 108 wolves. Now, let's reduce that. What happens when there's 12 bears? I can divide that by 5. I divide this by 5, and 108 divided by 5 is, I have no idea, divided by 5, 2, 10, 8, 1, 5, 21.6 volts. Well, right? Well, the actual answer should be 22 because you can't have 21 points, you can have 0.6 of a wolf. So, uh, but Number wise, that's your answer, 21.6. Okay. Um, we're back to this because you'll have a handout that also deals with this. So, boys and girls, and again, start getting used to maybe setting it like this. Part of the boys, girls, this is my total. Five to two. When there's five boys, two girls, it'll give me a set total of seven people. Find a total number of children if there are 12 girls. Well, when there are 12 girls, where would, I, where would I put 12? 12, I'll put it right here. Right? So, how did that increase? Times 6. So that means that everybody here is going to be times 6. This is going to be times 6. 5 times 6 is 30. 7 times 6 is 42. 30 plus 12 is 42. Look, when there's 30 boys, there will be 12 girls for a total of 42. So, we know what we did our... Uh, problem correctly and says find a total number of children. Well, when there are 12 girls, there's going to be 30 boys and there are going to be a total, 42 total children. Okay. Apples pair, so again, part, part total, part is apple. The other one is pairs. When I have, it gives me a total, right? So ratio is 4. 3, 7, and the 7 I got because I added 4 apples, 3 pears gives me a total of 7 items, 7 fruits. How many pears and how many pears are, how many apples and how many pears are there? They're total 42. Well, my total increased to 42. What did I multiply that by? By 6. This is by 6, which gives me 18. This is by 6, which gives me 24. 24 plus 18 does equal 42, so that's correct. So what happens when there are 42 total fruits? 24 are apples, 
18 are pairs. Okay. Again, we can set it up like this. Uh, we'll just part, part total, part is pencils. Parts pens, and the ratio is three to five and the total. So total of eight items, right? If there are twenty-one pencils, pen, twenty-one pencils. The pencils grew from three to twenty-one. That would be times seven. So I'm going to be times seven over here. This is thirty-five, and then my total is going to be also times seven, equal fifty-six. I can double check. When they're 56 total, 20, 21 of them are pencils, 35 are apple, uh, are pears, uh, ugh, are pens. 21 plus 35 does equal 56, so that checks out. So how many pens are there? 35 pens. Sam walks 12 miles in three hours, so this one, um, it's not a part, part, I wouldn't call it part, part total, but just only because I can't. What do I add? What do I get when I add 12 miles? If I did this part, part total, and this was miles, and this was hours, and this was total, right? And I write 12 miles, 3 hours. How do I get, what do I add here? 12 plus 3 and gives you 15, but I'm adding miles and hours. You can't really add those two, okay, and call it, I don't even know what you would call it when you add miles and hours together. So, <clears throat> whereas here, Pencils and pens, I can add these two for a total of, you know, eight writing instruments. They're of the same category. Uh, here, apples and pears, a total be, you know, seven fruits. And on this one, boys and girls, it give me seven children in total. But here, um, miles in total, miles and hours, uh, not really the adding type. So I'm going to take the last column out and just write this as a... Uh, ratio between miles and hours, so 12 miles takes that person's three hours, right? And how long will, her, will it take her to walk? 20 miles. So 20 miles, put for this, 20 would go over here, right? So, <clears throat> this. 20 would go over here. So what happens, or how many hours will it take her to walk 20 miles? Now, if you look this way, is there anything you multiply by 12 that gives you 20? 12 times 1 is 12, 12 times 2 is 24, not really, right? So, <clears throat> this one, what about side to side? Is there anything <clears throat> divided by 12 to give you 3? If you went from 12 this way, it would be divided by 4, right? So 12 divided by 4 it gives you 3. I can do that here and go 20 divided by 4. So going sideways is divided by 4, and 20 divided by 4 gives me 5. So to walk 20 miles, it will take her 20 hours. Sorry, sorry, 5 hours. Jeez. OK. So if I'm going to stop here, um, if you have that handout and you have questions on that handout, Quite a few pages here, especially you might have questions on this page right here. Okay, um, and if you do, just send an email okay, on the contact form on the class website. Okay, so I'll leave you at that for now.